Today is the anniversary of the assassination of John Lennon. And when that happened, there was a real impulse to do something in tribute to him. We're standing in Strawberry Fields, which is at West 72nd Street, just in the park, and right next to the Dakota apartment building, which was one of the earliest apartment buildings ever built in New York. And it was the home of John Lennon and Yoko Ono. My name is John Reddick, and I serve as the Director of Community Engagement for projects here in Central Park. So right after John Lennon died, the first gesture was naming the area Strawberry Fields. After it was named Strawberry Fields, Yoko Ono actually saw the area being turned into a garden for peace. And over 121 countries started to send things from rocks to exotic plants, a range of objects. At the time, the Conservancy was a very fledgling organization, and the Conservancy realized there wasn't room in the park to put all these objects. And so they brought in Bruce Kelly, who was a landscape architect and Olmsted scholar. And they sort of convinced Yoko to sit down and think about it in a broader way. Yoko was a conceptual artist. Her impulse wasn't to do a figurative sculpture necessarily of John Lennon, but a place where people would gather and contemplate peace. So in the editing process, Bruce Kelly came up with a list of plants that were either natural to the area or naturalized plants that had been incorporated into the American plant palette. And with that list, countries could donate trees or plants related to that list. And with that, the Italians had talked about presenting a mosaic, and it was Yoko Ono's idea, actually, to incorporate the word imagine. But the great thing about all of it is that the natural environment became the monument more than just the physical centerpiece.